Hello Christchurch and welcome to day six of Daily Connect, which is our journey through John's Gospel. Uh, I hope you've been finding it uh, helpful. I've had a number of emails and texts from people saying that they've really enjoyed uh, these devotionals and uh, I hope that they'll continue to be useful for you. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, it's still strange times, isn't it? Uh, I found the weekend really strange. I don't know about you, um, but Sunday without seeing you guys was not the same. I'm sure many of you feel the same way. So we're going to get on with this. We're going to read today John chapter 3 verses 1 to 21. Um, so please pause now and read the passage. I hope you've done it. Uh, remember the most important part of this is that you read the passage not that you listen to me. So here we have uh, a really fascinating passage. Uh, it's rich with all sorts of things. And all the way through so far within John's Gospel, we've seen John trying to point to the supremacy of Christ over all things. First of all, in that initial passage, he is the author and creator of all things. That he is the word uh, that and God, God's spoken word created all things. Uh, we see how... When his disciples first meet Jesus, they see someone with authority and they leave everything to follow him. Uh, we see how Jesus has supremacy over all creation, even the, through things like um, turning water into wine. He can do all things through the power of God. We see how he is greater than a temple and how here in this passage he continues with that theme of Jesus being greater than all organised religion, certainly the organised religion of the day. What we have is uh, Nicodemus coming in the middle of the night. And uh, there's lots of reasons um, put forward why that is, seems to be such an important thing for John to write. Uh, maybe it's because Nicodemus is being cautious that he didn't want other of the Pharisees to uh, see that he was going to Jesus to, to talk about scriptures. But it could also just be a simple thing. Uh, rabbis always said that uh, the evening was the better time to study scripture because you are less likely to be disturbed. And so maybe it was just a traditional time to talk about the big things of life. But Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a man who was meant to have all the answers for, for the people of his day, goes to Jesus seeking answers and he's looking for the answers around who Jesus is and what he's come for and of course what Jesus talks about is huge it's all centered around what one of the most popular verses that you'll ever hear uh, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life and in this passage, uh, that's the central verse, but everything else seems to come around it. And so there's a few things that Jesus talks about. First of all, he talks about how you get into this eternal life by being born again. It's a, that's a phrase that's loads with all sorts of baggage, unfortunately. And, and yet Jesus talks about it. Having spiritual rebirth. Not that we have to be physically born, but that we are spiritually reborn. That something inside of us that was once not alive suddenly comes alive. And of course, that's what baptism is about, isn't it? That, that what was is now dead, and then you are resurrected to something that is brand new. And uh, so Jesus says we must be born again. And that's so key, isn't it? That somehow or other we have this movement towards life. For some people, it's a big, dramatic change. For others, for, for, for me, for instance, it was a slow process over a number of months where I suddenly knew I was different. I was reborn. I was born again. But however you come by it, you do need to come by it. If you've never had that experience of knowing that something has changed within you, then I would encourage you today to come before God and just ask Jesus into your life, that you might know his life in your heart, that your spirit might come alive through the power of the cross and the resurrection. 
But then Jesus talks about salvation and he talks about it in a, in a way that means he is showing something about what salvation is. And he talks about that strange little story in uh, Numbers 21. And he says that one day Jesus would be lifted up in the same way that Moses lifted up the snake. And I think that's a fascinating um, parallel because Jesus is talking about salvation and yet the Numbers story is actually more about healing. If you remember that story, uh, the, the Israelites have been plagued by venomous snakes and many of them had died. But when G uh, Moses lifted up a snake on a bronze stick, when they looked to the snake, if they'd been bitten by a snake, they would be healed. And so that's, that is a symbol of healing. And salvation and healing are, to be honest, pretty much the same thing. To when we are saved, we are not just forgiven of our sins. It's much more than that. We become whole. And one day when we get to see Jesus in heaven, we'll be completely whole physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, socially, completely whole, made new in every single way. See, being born again is a process. We are still babies, but one day when we get to see Jesus, we will be completely whole, completely new. And I just love this idea of salvation and healing being similar. The Greek word for salvation is sozo, and at its very root, it means healing. The two go hand in hand. And then finally, Jesus talks about the outcome of our salvation, that we are free from condemnation, that we live in freedom, knowing who we are, whose we are, knowing why we're here, knowing that all that we have done wrong in the past no longer is baggage on our shoulders, dragging us down, but we are free. It's fantastic, isn't it? That you can live life now free from all the burdens that you've carried with you for so long. See, Jesus is supreme over all things. And in your salvation, when you come to him, there's nothing else that you need or need to do. You simply come to him. Let me pray. Let me pray for you that you might know the full wholeness, the completeness of salvation in your life that you may keep growing in that so that one day when you get to heaven, you'll know that you have been set free from all things. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters now. Lord, I pray for whoever is watching this, that today that they may know deep in their heart what it means to be born again. That they may know your healing, saving power in their lives. I pray that they may walk in freedom from condemnation. Lord, I pray that they may understand what it truly means to be saved. What John 16 truly means, that we may have eternal life, and eternal life is all of all the goodness of God poured into our hearts so that we might be whole, complete, new, born again. Lord, may they know your salvation, I pray. Amen. So let me encourage you today. Stay connected to God. Stay connected to the one who will bring you salvation and healing. Goodbye.